All right, mate, how's it going? In today's video, chapter 10 of Arthur's Rise of the Lich King. Things are about to escalate quite quickly. So let's go. Following on immediately from the last video, the group got up that morning and got ready and stuff. And after a few hours of traveling along the road, they started to come across a few scattered farmsteads, which confused Arthas a little bit, because none of these farms were marked on the map that he was consulting. But Falric, who had grown up in this area, kind of explained why. Most of these farmers are the independent sort. They bring their produce and livestock into the villages, sell it, and then go home. Is there bad blood? Nah, it's just the way things are done. Well, if that's the relationship, then these farmers probably wouldn't summon outside aid if they fell ill. Some of these people could be sick. Jaina raised a good point, and the group decided it was probably best to start their investigation here. So, they slowly approached the farms, allowing the inhabitants enough time to notice and prepare for them. But as they drew closer to a farmhouse, Arthas noticed something a little bit weird. Look, the gates have been smashed, and the livestock's gone. That's not a good sign. Anyone else think it's a bit weird that no one's come out to greet us yet? Everyone else did indeed think it was a bit weird that no one had come out to greet them yet. So, the prince signalled the group to halt. Greetings to you all. I am Arthas, Prince of Lordaeron. My men and I mean you no harm. Please, come out and speak with us. We have some questions concerning your safety. And there was no response. In fact, it was so quiet, all they could hear was the wind and rattling of window shutters and squeaky creaky noises. It was all a bit spooky. Guess no one's here. Or they're too sick to come out. They could need our help, Arthas. We should at least go and check. As the prince glanced at his men, he could see that they did not look too keen on walking into a house that might be infested with plague victims. And to be honest, he didn't really want to do it either. But Jaina was right. These were his people. He made a vow to protect them, no matter the cost. So Arthas gestured to his men and started to move forward. Jaina moved too, but he turned to her and told her to stay outside. Arthas, I'm not some fragile little doll. I was sent here to investigate the plague. And if there are victims here, I need to see them for myself. Ugh. All right then. Upon reaching the garden of the farmhouse, the wind changed, revealing a smell that caused both Jaina and Arthas to gag. It smelled like a slaughterhouse, mixed with the stench of rot and shit, and it was coming from inside. Blech. I still need to Blech. examine. Suddenly, a horrific cry filled the air as something came out of the house towards them, and Arthas's hammer began to glow so bright that he had to squint. But as he focused on the approaching shape, he realized it was some kind of bloody walking nightmare. Grey-green rotten flesh, Bones sticking out where they shouldn't be. Pustules and boils oozing nasty black fluid. Arthas was so shocked at the sight of it that he barely had time to swing his hammer before the thing tried to jab him with a pitchfork. But he managed to defend himself, and although it seemed to do the trick, there were now more of the damn things coming out of the farmhouse. The rest of the men drew their swords, whilst Jaina immediately started hurtling fireballs. It was chaos. At one point, one of the walking corpses stumbled back inside the house, and because it was currently on fire from Jaina's attack, Arthas came up with a brilliant idea. That's it. Jaina, burn the farmhouse. Burn it to the ground. So she did. A huge fireball exploded into the house, taking several of the animated corpses down, and the group then focused on slaughtering the rest. And then there was silence. What the hell? They're called undead. Like preservers. I thought things like this were just bullshit to scare children. Now nah, they're real enough. I've just never seen one. Never expected to. Arthas noticed his men were now eagerly listening to Jaina, hoping for some explanation of what the balls was happening. And he couldn't help but suddenly feel extremely grateful for all the times Jaina had been like, No, Arthas, I won't hang out with you today. I need to study. The animation of corpses is not unheard of. It would take a pretty powerful necromancer, though. Arthas, a moment. Arthas and Jaina then stepped away from the rest of the group for a little private chat. I know what you're going to say, Jaina. You were sent here to find out if this plague's magical in nature, and it's starting to look like it is. Jaina didn't say anything but nodded, and Arthas glanced back over to his men, who had started to clean themselves off and compose themselves a little bit. We haven't even hit the main villages yet. I have a feeling we're going to see more of these undead. I have a feeling you're right. A short time later, the group had departed the cluster of farmsteads and were travelling along the road again. But Jaina suddenly drew up her horse and paused. What are you looking at? Jaina then pointed, so Arthas followed her gaze, and all he could see was a grain silo, standing alone on a hill. The granary. No, the land around it. Jaina then dismounted and head up the hill, and then started to examine the soil. The dirt was dry, and the grass was dead. And yet several yards away from the silo, the grass was green and healthy. What could have caused this? Not sure. Reminds me of the Dark Portal and the Blasted Lands. When the portal opened, demonic energies from Draenor spilled through into Azeroth and the land around the portal died. Yeah, I remember. Jaina, could the grain itself be plate, carrying this demonic energy? Let's hope not. Look at those crates. That's the seal of Anderhall. 
the main distribution center for the northern boroughs. If this grain carries the plague, there's no telling how many villages might be infected. Arthas couldn't help but notice that Jaina's voice was starting to sound strained and tired. And as he looked at her, he saw that she'd gone real pale and looked awful. Fear suddenly shot through him, so he grabbed her hand, closed his eyes and murmured a prayer. And as the light filled him and then spread from his hands to hers, Jaina slowly realized what Arthas was doing and why he was doing it. He just saved her life. Everyone needs to wear gloves, now, no exceptions. Luckily, the rest of the men were in full armor, so most of them already had gauntlets on anyway. But at least they'd learned something else about this plague now, even if it had almost killed Jaina. The mission itself seemed pretty clear now. The priority was to find granaries and destroy them. And that mission was helped further the following day when the group came across a couple of Keldorai priests who had also began to sense the wrongness that was creeping through the land. They pointed the group in the direction of a warehouse at the far end of the village they were approaching. And as the group traveled through that village, they came across some dwarves who were currently firing mortars towards a horde of undead. We could use your help. There's a warehouse at the end of town that needs destroying. We're a bit busy, mate, in case you hadn't noticed. What's in the warehouse is killing these people. Ah, sod it. Lads, we're to help this Bonnie boy's troops. By the way, who exactly are you, Bonnie boy? I'm Prince Arthur's Menethil. And you are? Ah, Dargle, at your service. My apologies, your highness. Arthur wasn't too bothered about the dwarves' impudence. It actually made him smile a little bit that this dwarf had had absolutely no idea who he was talking to. Plus, the prince was kind of grateful that they'd now built up their numbers into a small army to fight their way through the village. And as they fought their way through, the initial shock and horror was fading, making it a lot easier to fight these monstrosities. Arthas, look! Arthas went ahead and looked at where Jaina was pointing, and saw a group of humans, clad in black, and waving their arms about. And they seemed to be directing the undead. Over there! Target them! The dwarves quickly spun their cannons around whilst Arthas' men charged towards the living peeps in black robes, and Arthas started to feel a bit smug about their inevitable victory. But, as soon as they came under fire directly, the mysterious group of magi ceased their activities, huddled together, and began casting something else. Something even Arthas recognized as a portal. Don't let them escape! However, it turned out they weren't trying to escape. They were calling upon more reinforcements. Scores more undead appeared out of nowhere, as well as some huge pale creature that had way more limbs than it should have. Looked like something that had been sewn together from different corpses. Twas an abomination! Arthas immediately charged towards it, and some of his men did the same. The creature was slow, and obviously a dumbass, so they brought it down soon enough. Unfortunately, during that little distraction, the group of Magi decided maybe they would cheese it, after all. Summoned another portal and disappeared. Damn it! Jaina approached Arthas and put her hand on his arm, but he was furious. He wasn't in the mood for soft touches and comforting words. Destroy that warehouse, now! Aye, your highness. Let's go, lads. The dwarves surged forward, rolling their cannons within range, and then boom, the granary crumbled to the ground. And that made Arthas feel a little bit better. Jaina, burn what's left of it. She was already in the process of doing that before he'd even finished barking orders at her. Both the humans and dwarves then stood side by side, triumphantly, as the remnants of the granary burned to ash. Arthas didn't join them though. He walked away a short distance, and Jaina then joined him soon after. The Magi, dressed in black. Necromancers, Magi who dabble in dark magic. Obviously they and whomever they serve are behind this plague. Demonic energy might still be involved, but I don't know. None of this makes any sense. I want them. I want their leader. I want the bastard who's deliberately slaughtering my people. In that moment, Arthas recalled the crates that they had seen earlier at the silo. And a hall. It was the only lead they had. So they might as well go there next. And we're leaving it there! Ooh, the pressure's starting to get to him. In the next chapter, the pressure definitely gets to him. Arthas meets Kel'Thuzad and makes another startling discovery about the plague. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!